Hi there, my name is Steve Gearhart and this is the Unagi Observer. Thank you so much for stopping by this week and watching this week's video because this is the start of the 2022 season for the Unagi Observer. Yes, this is the first episode of the real season. The interlude is done. So we're going to get on to some cool stuff here. And uh, speaking of cool stuff, what we're going to get into is a uh, manga review. That's how we're going to start off the season. And I think it's one that you're going to like. It's by a guy you might have heard of before, Satoshi Kon. And uh, yeah, the, the manga we're going to look at is Opus, Satoshi Kon's Opus. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So before we talk about Opus, and before I do a review of that manga uh, by Satoshi Kon, let's actually talk about Satoshi Kon for, for a moment. Um, I'll keep it brief. Uh, so Satoshi Kon is a tragic figure, figure in uh, anime and manga industry, uh, simply because he died way too young. He died at the age of 46 in 2010 of pancreatic cancer. He got the diagnosis and lived just like, I think less than six months after he got the diagnosis. He chose not to tell anyone about it except for his immediate family because he wanted people to remember him as he was and not what he looked like when he died, which was apparently very emaciated. Um, and it's tragic because he he his work is really, really good um, from top to bottom. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but he was a mangaka first, and then he went into animation. His goal was always to go into animation, but it, it was manga where he cut his teeth. And um, Opus is is the last manga he worked on before he went on to his first movie, uh, that that was his own, um, where he wrote wrote the script, wrote the storyboards, and, and directed it, which was Perfect Blue. Um, leading up to that, he had worked with other manga cause like Oshi on Seraphim, and it was that particular manga where he decided to make the switch from from manga to anime finally. Um, after dabbling his toes into anime while working with Otomo of Akira fame. Um, some of the work, some of the background uh, work in Memories and some of the other Otomo's projects is Satoshi Kon. And so that's kind of kind of really neat. Um, so, yeah, he died tragically. And, you know, his body of work in terms of being a director, you know, and, and in animation is pretty small. It's, it's uh, Perfect Blue... Uh, Millennia, Millennium Actress, Paranoia Agent, the series, um, Paprika, Tokyo Godfathers. I feel like I'm missing one, so if, if I'm missing one and you happen to know what it is out there in, in, in um, YouTube land, if you could just put it down below, that would be awesome. But you get an idea, but that that's pretty much it. And, and it's so sad that he died in 2010 because we could have gotten so much more from him at this point. Um... He, he would have only been in his late 50s by now. Um, so, yeah, so, so, so it's a really tragic story. And Opus, which I'm going to talk about here in a moment, is considered to be his last real manga work. And it's kind of interesting because he considered it a failure. So, um, yeah, let's start talking about the manga called Opus by Satoshi Kon. Opus is is no different than a lot of what Satoshi Kon did with his anime, which is talking about reality versus dreams versus fantasy versus fact versus fiction. Where you are in those places are is are you is your reality a dream? Is the dream the reality? Are you in somebody else's reality or somebody else's dream? Are they in your dream and they're thinking of their own world? Right. So all those all those kinds of themes are in this in this uh, in this manga opus. Opus. Um, it's hard to encapsulate this the, the story of this because it starts off basically with a mangaka who is under a deadline, under pressure to get this thing done. He is within uh, one or two chapters of being done with the series called Resonance, and it's for a magazine, a manga magazine. And like I said, he's he's got the, the publisher and the editor are putting the screws on him. So one night he comes in with his assistant, and he and the assistant basically both <laughs> fall asleep trying to finish this manga. And it's as you as you read it, you you discover that one of the characters actually steals 
um, one of the last panels. That's that's the linchpin of how he's going to end it. And you discover that the character from the manga who reaches up from the panel to take the piece of paper away is the person who gets killed in that panel. And he doesn't want to die. He wants to continue to live. So he's, he's running away with this. And somehow uh, the mangaka falls into his own manga. Like it falls into the panel that he just drew as, as he was sleeping. And he wakes up in this world of resonance. The, the manga he's, he's, he's writing. And so the first few chapters is basically about him figuring out that Lin, one of his heroes, has the original artwork. And he's trying to stop Lin from doing things that would alter that reality. Uh, because, you know, again, Lin doesn't want to die, but the manga has it written as the final battle where he defeats the main villain called Mask, he dies in that battle. So Toko, who is the heroine of the entire story, is sort of reluctantly helping him. And as they go through this story, as they go through back and forth from the actual manga and into the manga world, real world, is it real or is the manga real? Um, Satoko, he and Satoko are trying to figure out what to do, how to stop Lin, how to continue this world, and how to meet this deadline that he has to do. And as it goes, as it goes on, it, we talk, it talks more about how the mangaka realizes that he is a creator of this place and he has great control over the manga, what happens inside the manga and that the, that the people living inside the manga are having lives and he is guiding their most of a lot of their lives but it's a whole world it's a whole nother universe that he's created and after a while he kind of realizes that he's kind of a crappy god and uh he's striving to do better but of course underlying all of this is trying to stop lynn from destroying said world by going against the wishes of the mangaka. And the mangaka is trying to figure out, how do I do this without killing Lin? I, I, this is not what I want to do, but how do I stop him? And how do I keep this world together? And everyone's kind of just not listening to me and going off in their own directions. And things are happening. Yeah, what do I do? You know, existential crisis. With a deadline. <laughs> so the guy's got to so do this. Um... The unfortunate thing about Opus is that it ends on a cliffhanger, a literal cliffhanger. And what had happened was that um, in real life, Satoshi Kon, who is, who is writing Opus, he was doing it for Comic Gents magazine. And he um, was within, I believe, a chapter or two of ending Opus. And he got the phone call and said, hey, the magazine has folded. They're not going to continue this. It, it's over. Okay. And Satoshi Kohn's kind of just, you know, like, all right, well, I'm about to go into anime. So maybe this is this is good fortune. Maybe this, this is what needed to happen. And I'm going to write a little note to the fans and say, someday I'll get back to Opus and end it for you. And give it the ending that, that you want. But for right now, I'm going to have to take a hiatus from this particular project so I can pursue my debut into anime with Perfect Blue. So that, that wonderful anime, which uh, if you ever get a chance to watch it on the, on the big screen, please do. It is amazing. Um, so a few years go by, Satoshi Kon does his anime work, and he does very well in this anime work. And he's left manga behind. Opus is literally the last manga he worked on. And it, and it ends on a cliffhanger. There's no ending to it. Then, of course, Satoshi Kon dies. He passes away. He you know, has pancreatic cancer. And it is believed that this will never be finished. A few years after his death, the family and his estate kind of are going through his things, taking stock of stuff, um... You know, just seeing what they can do with it and seeing if there's any any other stories that could be printed out, things like that. Um, and they discover this chapter and they discover that, oh, hey, this is the, the I think this is the final chapter to Opus. And so they made an omnibus out of it and they sold it worldwide and it has this 
ending chapter in there. I'm reticent to tell you what that chapter is. I am going to warn you that it is unsatisfying, but it is an ending. Clearly, Satoshi Kon, at some point, felt bad about it enough to say, I'm going to give it some kind of an ending so that I can satisfy at least a completion of the story. The fans may not like it, but here it is. And it, the chapter itself is unfinished, meaning that the storyline is done, so you can get the storyline, you can get the end of the plot, but it's unfinished in terms of its drawing. So some of it is very incomplete, there's no backgrounds. Some of it is literally sketching, half of it's inked. You, you get the idea. It's, it's an unfinished product. The, the only finished thing about it is the ending of the story. So that's what you get. And I'm going to say to you that um, I think you should read it. It is a manga version of themes that Satoshi Kon did very well in his anime, which means that it, translate, it translates differently when you do it as a manga. So it might be a little bit different. If you're not familiar with his manga, but you're familiar with his anime, uh, which, I, which I was when I read this, um, it's going to be different um, in, in, a, in a way. And so just, just know that. And again, the ending... I'll let you decide whether or not how you feel about it. I, I, I do think you're going to be unsatisfied on a certain level, but un, but I want to see if you are thinking that it's an appropriate ending, like I do. I do think it's appropriate, and I'm glad he did, on some level, complete it. Or or not. Maybe you don't. Maybe you won't feel that way when you, when you read it. So just give it a try. See what you think. Um, it's not an easy read. Satoshi Kon stuff is not always easy. Um, there is some dark stuff going on in here, and there is. You know, uh, <clears throat> there's a there's a subplot line of a serial killer that kills little girls, and it's pretty graphic um, and very unfortunate, and to the point where Satoshi Kon's character in there, the mangaka, is even startled at himself for having done that, and um, let or letting that happen in in the manga and actually visualizing it. So, you know, just, just know that it's there and it could be triggering. Um, this isn't going to be a spoiler, but just to let you know, that is, I believe, the final panel of what was published in the magazine. And this would have been in 1996. Uh, so, yeah. So let's see what you think about it. Maybe you'll be okay with it. Maybe you won't. I don't know. But I would like to know. So if you do read it and you read the last chapter there... Go down below and t and tell me what you think in a nice polite manner. Tell me what you think. Did did it work for you? Did it not work for you? Do you understand why he wanted to complete it? Um, you know, were you satisfied? Were you unsatisfied? You know, let us know. Let us know what you think. So you know, I invite you to give us your thoughts. So anyway, that is Opus Satoshi Kon's Opus, his quote unfinished manga unquote. All right, so that's that. Okay, again, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video, the first video of the 2022 season for the Unagi Observer. Um, I hope we start off got got off to a good start here. Um, I got a lot of good stuff happening. I planned for this for this season. Hopefully, the we'll get through all of it. Um, there's going to be some role playing stuff. We're going to be doing some some model kit stuff, um, some food kind of stuff, whole bunch of stuff. Uh, just stuff, stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, so again, thank you for, for watching the first episode of the 2022 season of the Unagi Observer. And with that, I would like to say to you, we are you know, really doing the job on COVID right now. And I want to keep us, I want us to keep going, so do what you got to do. If you have to social distance, social distance, wear a mask if you need to wear a mask. Get your shots, definitely get your shots. Get your boosters if you need to. Um, do all those things because... Let us get to the point where we can see each other in person, face to face. Now, um, there are already conventions being planned, going on, have have planned or, or have gone on, and one of them is Otakon. So I'm looking forward to seeing any of you out there. If you happen to see me 
there at Otogon in July, please come up and say hi to me. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. I want to meet you. I want to meet you. But to do that, we got to do the thing. And doing the thing is making sure that we pay attention to COVID and do the right things, the things that we need to do so that we don't get sick and get everybody into lockdown and all that horrible, horrible stuff. So with that, um, I'm going to end this video and say um, I'll see you guys next week. Next week is going to be, uh, I'm not sure exactly sure what's going to happen, but um, it'll be something. I'm, I'm thinking role-playing. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but, but yeah, and for the next three weeks, there will not be uh, a weekly dig over anime archaeology. The reason for that is that some of us are going on vacation, some of us are doing things, and so it's just our schedules don't work out for the next three weeks. So that's that. But I do invite you to come to the Anime uh, Archaeology Discord. The link will always be down there, down at the bottom. Um, I'll leave it a link for OnCon7 if you haven't seen that yet. Um, but come by Discord because there's a lot of cool stuff going on. There's a lot of cool people there. I put up a lot of Spotify playlists and things like that. Um, or things that I happen to find. Music related, food related, things like that. There's always a good chat about anime going on. That's really the, 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 the push and pull of it. So come on by the, the, the Discord. Again, I'll put the link down below. And... Uh, and yeah, join in the fun, and uh, you know, for the next three weeks, and then we'll we'll be right back at it with the the weekly dig. So with that, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Smash the bell, as they say. Love you guys, and I'll see you next week.